Hello everybody, welcome. Welcome and thank you for joining us once again. Um, back here again and I want to do the second part of the of the um, the GP with the ramekin handle attached. Now I've got some GP bowls here that we've recently made so the first thing I'm going to do to these is, is tap centre them and give them a very quick skim just just there on the base This is really literally just a very quick skim, it's not really hardly removing any t material, just truing up the form, just cleaning the shape down so that the, the, the line is continuous. to think of it as a, an ongoing curve that just goes around. Any curved shape, any curved shape that you see, you want to imagine what you're seeing is a curved shape, but what you're seeing is just a part of the circumference of what is a hole. So let's try and see the rest of the, the shape that this little bit here, your little curve that you've got on the side of your pot, it makes up just a small part of the circumference of a much bigger sphere. So think of the sphere, all right? I find that um, a helpful way to, to look at it, analyze it. All right, so there we are. We've got the four GP bowls. We've cleaned them down to the root. We're now, we're now ready to um, finish these off. So what are we going to do to them, you, you may ask? Well, Jennifer said to me, she said, I got a good idea. We were in a store and she said, well, see this here, look, we could make that out of clay. And I said, yeah, you're right, we could. Let's do it. <laughs> so. Aha, but what is it? What was it that we saw? I thought it was a good idea. Okay, I'm just going to bring the camera down here a bit closer. Yeah. So what we're going to do is... I'll do a couple of these. The idea, the idea was to make a small handheld colander with holes in it, you see? So what we're going to do is I'm going to put a hole right in the base of this. I'm going to put So we've got to, I've got to put these drainage holes in, you see, and I'll put some around, around the side as well. It's nice isn't it when you see something in a shop that is say made of that fantastic plastic and you think hey I can make that out of clay got to get away from plastic folks it's not good for us it's 
poison. So there we are. I've made some holes. Yeah, it's debatable. Well, how many holes do you need to put? Well. Put a few more just to be. Okay, how's that? All right, now you just seen me make the the handles. Well, here are some more. These handles are now ready to attach. So I'm just going to choose a handle. That's going to go on there. So I'm going to get my spatula and I'm going to cut this let's say if it's going to go on there like that about that angle then I'm going to have to cut that there roughly at that angle something like that. If you want it to be more kind of cocked up, you're going to have to cut a bit more away. The top bit there. Okay, I'm going to dip it in the water. I'm going to place it there like that's going to leave it's going to leave a mark isn't it so we're just going to use our thumbnail try and get in the habit of using your nails where you can if you've got nails you might as well put them to some use what better use huh so then that which you've already wet you're now going to take and push Now it is actually better to do this on, on a flat surface, better to work off the banding wheel, okay? So I'm giving it some firm pr pressure, but you know if you've got a pot that you've made and you're giving, giving something firm pressure, well put your hand behind it to support it, okay? Because if you're just going to give it firm pressure, well you could deform the pot, crack the pot, push it out of shape, all right? So. So I'm using my finger here now, I've turned it upside down, all right, to smooth to smooth and blend the handle into the body, to the body of the pot. Now, just at the very top here, it's a little bit awkward for me to get my finger in there because of the, because this has got a rolled rim and it doesn't, doesn't lend itself so now after I've, I have managed to successfully smooth it in just give it a 
a gentle sponge, okay, not too excessive though because the sponge does bring out the grog in the clay, brings it to the surface. Right? So, now what I've got here, this is a whole deburrer and I'm going to use it to count, it's a countersink tool actually. So I'm countersinking all these holes so they're dead smooth, no sharp edges. I think that's all the ones we have to do on the outside before the pot gets on the inside though I've got more to do before the pot gets properly hard a good idea just to go over these maybe just quickly with one's finger to to smooth smooth them. This takes a GP bowl which is a very quick quick item to make and and turns it into something more laborious to make. But that's like that with pottery, isn't it? There are some things that are that you make which are quick to make, you don't spend much time and energy on them. And you seem to get a price for that which is oops quite reasonable say against some other things like teapots for example a notoriously notoriously long-winded to make aren't they you have a lot of finishing off to do with a teapot a lot of parts to attach etc and You know, and you can't really get your money back on a teapot. Not unless you sell it almost as an individual piece and charge like for, for an individual pot. Okay, so I'm looking at that now. I'm going to take my sponge and I'm just gonna give it one right wipe on the rim because we want our rims to be nice and clean. Maybe that I, I might have the feeling I might want to just lift it a touch, give it a slight. Sometimes, if the handle is a little bit elevated, it makes the pot look a little bit more elegant. Do you know what I mean? Now, basically, we took the idea of using a GP bowl because I had some GP bowls already made, and um, so. It, it, you know, it was like convenient. It was convenient to to use a, a GP bowl. In actual fact, we could make these. I think, from a practical point of view, if they were a little larger, they would be more practical. But you know, sometimes it's like a, it's like there's small pestles and mortars, aren't there? And they're ones that are bigger. Yeah. Likewise, sometimes there is actually a place for a smaller version of something, as well as a bigger one. But I think I think I think a bigger one would be would be 
perhaps a good idea. So there it is, folks. Now I'll just show you one I made earlier, okay? Just while we're, we're just while we're talking about this, this is one I made a couple of days ago, and at, at that time I was thinking um, about having it with a narrower foot. And what happened was, because in fact, when I first thought of it, I thought about this as completely round, you know, you no, know, with no flat on it at all. But then I thought, well. Perhaps you need a flat to put it down, you know, or otherwise it might rock and roll away. So we did this one, which uh, in fact it, it was very, you see how topply it is because I made it too narrow in the base. <laughs> and, then, and then to try to make up for it I put this little spigot here, you see. Because <laughs> with the weight of the handle, with the weight of the handle it was wanting to tip up, you see. So I thought, well, I'll put a little like leg there to stop it. But you know what? It isn't really. It's not very practical. So scrap that idea. And then I decided, no, we'll make them with a normal size GP bowl foot. In that way, they at least they are they're stable and they'll stand up. Okay, folks. Just an idea. Give us some feedback on that. Give me your, what, what are your thoughts? What do you think about a colander? A small colander for the kitchen. What do you think? Do you think that's much too small? I think it is probably, but it depends what you see on what you want to use it for. And it's not a colander for rice or anything like that, but for, you know, for berries to rinse off or just a few things you can, um, you can use it for. So, please go to my website, simonleachpottery.com. We do have a few new tools that are going to be arriving soon. Uh, I've got to finish them off. Um, uh, ne a neck tool. No, yeah, what's it called? When you, when you go inside of a narrow neck of a pot, you know, and you want to get in underneath and lift it up a bit. Uh, so it's like a stick with a bit on the end. It's like a swan neck, a neck tool. So I'm going to have some of those to go to go on the website. Also, we're going to have some some sponges on sticks. Well, we've already got sponges on sticks, as you know, but um, we're going to offer them if people want to ha have them personalised with you know with a name put on them, like keep practicing Terry or keep practicing Simon or. Keep practicing, Harriet. I, I can write that on it for you. We're asking a one dollar extra to do that. Okay. It, all the details though are there on the website, so please go there, check them out. Um, yeah, I'm going to be doing a series on tools where we're going to go through some of the basic tools and talk about them and. Um, pros and cons and about just about tools in general anyway that, that'll be coming up shortly okay until then keep practicing see you soon bye <laughs>